the drug and kill his entire family with an axe. I would have been pretty scared too watching Reefer Madness in 1938 if that's all the information I had about cannabis. The weed marijuana is grown in every state in the Union. There's no end in sight for the war on drugs. As a Canadian, I'm against war. I believe in freedom and equality for all. Because in Canada, I'd have to say two reasons, really. One is pressure from the United States for their own insidious reasons. And the other would be that so many lies about marijuana have been allowed to be perpetrated all these years that Canadian politicians don't know how to get out from behind those lies. You may also believe that the facts have been exaggerated. Plants have sustained life on this planet for hundreds of millions of years. Recently, over the last few thousand years, humans discovered a particularly useful plant they called cannabis. Its origins are from ancient China and dates back approximately 10,000 years. Cannabis uses have ranged from healing physical and mental illnesses, food, fabric, paper, spiritual rituals, and for recreation. Over the last century, this plant has led to much controversy. In 1923, Canada made marijuana illegal without any parliamentary debate. The law was not enforced until 1937, the year it became illegal in the United States. This was the beginning of the Reefer Madness propaganda campaign. insane, a condition caused by the drug marijuana to which he was addicted. You don't really get stoned in the sense of when you get drunk, you really can feel appreciable changes in your ability to make decisions and your uh, thinking skills and your motor skills. None of that happens with cannabis. I, I, I like to describe it as kind of a one or two percent shift of perception uh, in the way you process the world around you, and that's really about it. Kirk is working on his master's thesis outlining the economic benefits of legalization. He organized the Beyond Prohibition Conference in Vancouver. If you look at drug use figures all over the world, and you see very many drug policies in place, and there it seems to be no relation between what drug policy a country has and the amount of use. It seems that in our industrialized parliamentary democracies, cannabis has a certain cultural function which is very similar all over the place and completely independent from the rule systems that bureaucrats or, or, or politicians have created around it. We started today with Murray Mollard saying the public is way ahead of the politicians on this issue. Uh, that's where we ended today, um, you know, with Senator Nolan saying you've got to push your leadership in the right direction. They're not going to lead you. You have to push them. You have to lead them. The Liberal government did have legislation as such that small quantities of marijuana would be decriminalized. Now what that means is it would no longer be a criminal offense to possess 
small quantities of marijuana. Currently, I think a lot of the problems associated with marijuana are based on the fact that it is illegal and nothing else. Is this really, uh, you know, uh, reefer madness? Is this going to be, uh, you know, people attacking people or, you know, smoking one joint and uh, on heroin the next day? Uh, probably not, but let's have that debate. Let's have some real, you know, logical, practical debate on the issue. We don't necessarily agree with legalization of marijuana, but we do agree with decriminalization of marijuana. I'd like to invite you to support our party which is in favor of modernizing our marijuana laws and creating a legal environment in which people can enjoy their marijuana in the peace and quiet of their own home or in a cafe uh, without having to worry about being criminalized. Did I get this right? Academics, politicians and the public all in favor of modernizing our marijuana laws? So why hasn't it happened? to restrict the free flow of commerce more than is absolutely necessary. And the Americans are very strange about it and they like to think that they like to think that they control the world. The US, like it or not, is the world leader in terms of setting drug policy. So we've got this anarchy under color of authority the county in California. The response to the passage of our law was to resist it. And uh, the people that are sworn to uphold it, they just turn their backs on it and do their best to destroy it. I know the United States um, sort of is in a panic right now over <laughs> possible decriminalization in Canada. I don't believe that the, the U.S. Uh, are in a posi position to dictate to us. I do believe that we as Canadians should look at what we consider a, a problem to us as Canadians and then make uh, the approaches that we believe that would best uh, resolve that problem or, or, or mitigate that problem to the best of our ability for, for Canadians. Only 36 years after the first arrest in Canada, the Ladane Commission recommended an end to charges for possession and cultivation. In 2001, Canada legalized marijuana for medical purposes. In September 2002, a special Senate committee released its final report, saying that marijuana is less harmful than alcohol and should be governed by the same sorts of regulations. Despite all the facts, marijuana remains illegal. And there are no benefits to the current prohibition. Black market prices, enriching criminality, putting good people in jail, causing a fabulous price to exist with basically a weed, um, the denial of civil rights of a basic nature when marijuana doesn't kill you, but everything that doesn't kill you is legal, from alcohol, tobacco, to fast cars, to guns, prescription drugs, you know, dangerous sports. These are all legal and they kill people and prove it. We'll make it that way because we're not going away. And that's all that matters is that people are allowed to do what they want to do as long as they're not hurting anybody else. What more do you need than that? Don't hurt me, don't hurt my stuff, and I'll do the same for you. How many more laws do we need than that? There's too many criminals being skilled for the same job. Too many deaths, too many die, what's left? Too many parents crying, saying they tried their best. Too much stress, not enough love, too much blood, staying in your brethren's hands. Canada's always been about free speech and stuff like that. And now there's a number of cafes and bookshops and stuff where you can smoke grass freely. And it's too much to contemplate, there's so many variations, it's too much for me to take. Too much nonsense and shame to deal with in the day. Too many ignorant people still unwilling to change. Mind frames stay the same as the earth self-destructs. And there's way too many people not giving a fuck. Too much nonsense. Nonsense and shame to deal with in the day too many ignorant and Canada does like to differentiate itself from the United States, especially in areas when it's so clear that the United States is doing the wrong thing. Uh, but there's also, you know, there's there's a lot of young people, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's kind of hip to use cannabis, right? And we're not ashamed of it up here. Uh, in the U.S., you know, you get that kind of sentiment that you have to cower in fear uh, and can't speak out and say, you know, I'm a cannabis user. Uh, in, in Canada, I think people are a little less reluctant. I think they're willing to say, hey, yeah, big deal. I am Canadian. I am Canadian. Too many orphans, too much shit that pisses me off to be recorded. Too many lawyers, envy and war. There's way too much money for anyone to be poor. Too much taken from us with not enough to give. So worried about death, we forgetting how to live. Too much there is a developing realization in this city that you need to regulate 
cannabis access and cannabis production in a way that no longer feeds this illusion that you can get it away or that it is bad because they know that for most people it is not bad at all. Too many weeks, too many sins, too many confessions and not enough priests, too many feats, not enough gains with too much to lose, too many people die of starvation, not enough food, too many women abused, raped, even slaughtered, too many newborns die in the trauma room because they father punched their mother's womb and the water broke too many months too soon before they daughters even do too many drive-bys and DWIs ever looked in the child's eyes of the parents that died too many lies not enough truth too many coppers crooked as politicians in the house of commons there's too much of one thing not enough of the other too much hate envy and lust too many suffer too many pay the price for not enough reasons too many religions spitting with not enough to believe too much nonsense and shame to deal with in the day too many ignorant people still unwilling to change mind frames stay the same as the earth self-destructs and there's way too many people not giving a fuck yeah. too much nonsense and shame to deal with in the day too many ignorant people still unwilling to change my